Welcome back to 100 Days of Generative Art. Today, we are going to be deploying our smart contract to the Polygon mainnet. Up until this point, every single NFT that we have minted has been on the Polygon Mumbai testnet, which has been great because we've been able to mint NFTs and deploy smart contracts and we haven't had to pay any transaction fees, but when we get into the real world of wanting to sell these NFTs, they become much more meaningful when they're deployed on a main net, which is uh, where everybody's actually doing live transactions. A test net is just for test transactions. The main net is for live production transactions. And since we're on day four, I think we're pretty ready to at least deploy our code to the main net. Now, if you're not ready, you can continue to work off of your test net for as long as you want, but today the focus is on deploying our smart contract to the Polygon mainnet and minting our first NFT on the Polygon mainnet. The two big pieces we need to focus on uh, with updating the code we have now and the smart contracts we have now to deploy to the Polygon mainnet. First, we need to make sure that we have actual Matic tokens inside of our balance instead of just um, having the test tokens we need to be able to have actual production matic tokens um, and i guess three because i was assuming that you've configured the matic main net but let's assume that you haven't and we'll add that as a third step second thing we'll want to do is make sure that we add main net configuration to our code so inside of our hard hat config, we're going to be adding a new configuration of a network for the actual production mainnet. Instead of the Mumbai testnet, we're going to have the mainnet configuration today. And then third and finally, uh, like what we just said, we're going to need to... Uh, s we don't actually need to configure MetaMask for the Matic mainnet because... You, MetaMask isn't what we're using, but it might be helpful. So I'll talk about it just so that if you do want to configure MetaMask to the Matic mainnet, you can. However, it's not required for this tutorial. Okay, so let's get started on the art side to make it a little bit more light and fun. Let's get started today going back to our P5.js demos. Today we're going to do some transform and blend. The first thing we'll do is we'll open our P5 demos. The link is in the description for this lesson. Once we open it up, we then are going to remix it. Oh, new accounts have a project limit. Looks like I'm going to have to wait a while to be able to do that. Um, but I have a feeling I've already created a project earlier. Let's check this one out. Let's check them both out, I guess. So this one's our pulsating animated circle. And this one's our just static circle. So neither of those are what we want. Let's see if it'll allow me to do it anyway. So I'll try it again. Just let me remix it, please. I guess I could also sign out if it's still not letting me create an additional project. We'll give this a couple seconds to see if it'll allow me to spin it up. I don't think it's going to let me, so what I'm going to do is sign out, and then I'll open it up again, and we'll remix it again. So it just isn't going to save it into my account, which is totally fine, because we're just playing around right now. Eventually, later on in the course, we're going to actually move this code into our own code base, so that it's not just in this glitch editor, but actually running on our local computer. 
but for now uh, we're still pretty early in this process so we're just taking one step at a time working towards the final product um, so here we have our piece of art let's talk through what this code does so we have one function for setup we've got a function for window resize and then we've got our draw function let's start with setup go to window resize and then talk about our draw so the setup is very familiar we create a canvas which is the same size as the height and width of the window and then we've got a window resize function that updates the canvas every time the window is resized. And the only thing that happens is we resize our canvas to the new window height and window width. Moving into our draw where the main drawing functions happen, we've got a blend mode of blend. So we set the default blend mode. And then we set a black background. We then set a foreground as white and then we set X or for or the difference blend mode so now we have a difference blend mode we're disabling our stroke and then we're centering our image in the center of the screen by taking the width of the screen dividing it by two and the height of the screen dividing it by two to take making it halfway right in the center and then fraction of screen dim we get dim the dimensions uh, the we get the min of width and height and the size of dim times 0 0.5 so we're getting half of the dimensions now I assume that min is minimum um, but this is the second time we've seen this min function so let's see what the min function actually does by looking up p5 js min function min we've got examples description determines the smallest value in a sequence of number and then returns that value minimum accepts any number of number parameters or an array okay so it's taking out of a set of objects the minimum value so if the height is a smaller value it'll use the height if the width is a smaller value it'll use the width in this case I think the width is less than the height so it should use the width at which point we then get the size which is going to be the width and it'll be half of that width. After that we're making a rectangle centered on the screen. So we go rect mode center so we're creating a rectangle in the center of the screen. The rectangle size is going to, well the rectangle is going to be painted at our x and y coordinate so right in the middle of the screen which looks like where our rectangle is painted and then we've got size and size which is going to be half of the width so the length of our rectangle is half the width and the height of our rectangle is half the width if we change this value to 50 it then changes our width value and then if I change this to 50 it's then going to change our height value boom so we can see that our x coordinate is going to be the center of our rectangle in the x, uh, the x dimension the y value is the center of our rectangle in the y dimension. After that, our third parameter is the uh, length of our rectangle. And then the final parameter, the fourth parameter, is the height of our rectangle. And if we want to verify that those parameters are what we think, we can come back over here and we can find the rect method. And here it is. The so the x is the x coordinate of the rectangle the y is the y coordinate of the rectangle and then we've got width and height width is the width of the rectangle and height is the height of the rectangle optional um, and then we've got a radius of the corners which are additional there's a lot of other things that we can do with that rect but right now we're just using four parameters so that is what our how our rectangle is being drawn after that we're creating a circle slightly offset down into the right so we push I'm not sure what this push function does. Um, let's see what push does. Push. Push function saves the current drawing style settings and transformations while pop restores these settings. Note that these functions are always used together. 
They allow you to change the style and transformation settings and later return to what you had. When a new state is started with push, it builds on the current style and transform information. The push and pop functions can be embedded to provide more control. So here's our pop. So we are pushing and then we are popping. We're pushing and then we are popping. So the first thing we're doing is we're drawing our rectangle. Then we are pushing uh, that value. After that, we are doing a translate where we're taking size divided by four, size divided by four, and then we're drawing an ellipse, which is gonna be X, Y, size, and size. Now, my next question is, what's the translate function doing? So it's good to keep the P5JS documentation up. Looks like it's gonna move everything from off center. So we draw an original rectangle, we then translate it, we draw another rectangle, um, we translate it again, and then we new draw an additional rectangle. So it specifies an amount to displace objects within the display window. The X parameter specifies the left and right translation, the Y parameter specifies the up and down translation. Transformations are cumulative and apply to everything that happens after and subsequent calls to the function accumulates the effect. For example, calling translate 50 zero and then translate 20 is the same as translate 70 zero. If translate is called with and draw, the transformation is reset when the loop begins again. The function can be further controlled by using push and pop. And that looks like exactly what we're doing. We're using the push and pop to translate further. So we're pushing this previous set, then we're translating uh, to then create a new ellipse at which point we are popping. Um, so we are getting the size of the screen. We're offsetting it by 25% or one fourth of the size, which is either in our case gonna be the width because the width is less than the height. Um, and then the same for our height. We're gonna be offsetting it the exact same amount. So if I change this to divided by one, it's going to change our X coordinate even more, and it's gonna make it much more offset. And now, what do you think will happen if we do the same thing over on this parameter? Do you think it's gonna change our X value or our Y value? It'll change our Y value. And then if I change it to one, do you think uh, the circle is gonna get closer to our center or further away from our center? Should get further away, and it gets further away. So if we want to spread this out more, I could set this to two, and two, and now it'll be more off center, but in this case, we want it to have a lot of overlap, so we'll change it back to four or four. That way there's much more overlap. Then we draw that ellipse uh, from X, Y, size, and size. The same thing that we did up here, the only difference is we've had added this translate. So after that we pop, that way we go back to being centered in the center of the screen. Uh, so now we're going to push again to change our offset. We're going to translate again, and this time we're doing the exact same thing except we're using negative so that the offset is going the opposite direction for our triangle. Instead of going down and to the right, we're going to go up and to the left. We then create a triangle centered at uh, x, and then we've got y, and then we've got x plus size divided by 2, y plus size divided by 2. There's a lot more parameters being passed in. Let's see what all these parameters do by looking up our triangle function. Okay, Draws a triangle, so we've got x1, y1, x2, y2, x3, y3. Ah, so it looks like for the triangle, each of these are a set of coordinates for each of the points on the triangle. So the first point is going to be the first point where it looks like our x value is the actual center of our uh, picture which was translated a little bit. I'm gonna assume that that is this point. Um, let's see what happens if we change this to see which point it is. Okay, so it looks like the first coordinate is our top point. And now let's try to guess what do we think 
the second coordinate is. Is it going to be this bottom left point or the bottom right point? My guess, let's see, x plus size divided by 2. My guess is going to be it's this bottom right point because we are our x value is going to be greater than our previous one. And x increases as we go to the right. So if we change this y value to divided by 1, the corner should shift up drastically. or it'll shift down drastically. Not sure I understand, but we were right about the point. And now this last one should modify the bottom left point. And I guess based off of the last logic, that should drop it down, and it does. So that's what everything does. Um, the push and pop are still a little bit confusing for us. We haven't fully grasped it, but it looks like we're using push and pop so that our translates only impact one of the shapes instead of impacting all of the shapes. So the first thing we do is we're drawing our rectangle, then we're drawing our ellipse, and finally we're drawing our triangle. Now the only things I'm going to change again are our colors, um, and I think I've got my colors saved. I'm going to take my first color um, and I'll make it our background. Those aren't the right colors. I'm going to go back and get the colors. Boop, boop, boop. Pick the color from the web page. Refresh this. Okay. Pick our first color. Go back to our sketch. Take the color. It's a midnight slate gray. There's our first color, and now our foreground instead of being white. I actually like that white, but I'm still going to update it. I actually like the white better, so I'm going to keep it as our white color. It's more, shows off the shape more. Okay, so now we've got our piece of generative art. Um, and the last thing I'm going to do... Um, this is actually all I'm going to do. I don't think I'm going to change anything else. So I'm going to save the image to Udemy course, generative art, new folder, generative art. And I'm going to call this one day four. We'll save it. Okay, so now we've got our piece of generative art. We've created our generative art. Let's host it back on Pinata so that it's on IPFS. Sign in to IPFS. And I don't know why that reminder's there. Let's upload a new file. Okay, they want us to click upload. Downloads should be called day four. Day four, day four, day four. Here's our piece of generative art. I'm gonna upload it to IPFS using Pinata. Okay, so now we've got our piece of generative art. Now let's work on updating our metadata file. 
So we've, I'm going to clear out all these two, close others, close it all. Okay, so now we'll make a new JSON by copying and pasting. We'll rename this to day 4.json. We're going to call this day 4. And what's the name of this transform and blend? Transform plus blend. And now we need our IPFS resource link for day four. I'll copy that. And then we're going to overwrite this value with our IPFS value. Should end in JLIN. It does end in JLIN. Okay, so now we have our metadata. Now let's upload our metadata to Pinata just like we have every other time. So we're going to upload. Experiments, new days of generative art, NFT metadata, day four. Okay. Upload. And we've now uploaded our metadata. I'm going to copy that IPFS uh, CID. Next step is to actually add that to our minting scripts. So the mint script, we've now got our URI. We're going to change this to the URI of our new metadata. Boom. Our metadata should end 1HY9. It does end in 1HY9. So we have now updated our URI. We've got our wallet address, and then we have our contract address. Um, the only thing we're going to need to change when we deploy to mainnet is we're going to need to change... Um, what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this mint script file and I'm going to make one for our main net. So I'm going to rename this to mint script main net. That way uh, we can use this one for our main net. Now we don't know what our contract address is until we um, we don't know what our contract address is until we actually deploy the contract. But I can go ahead and get um, my new wallet address. For me, I'm using a different wallet than I was on the testnet, mostly because I shared with everyone my wallet address, uh, my private key. So I don't want you all to know this private key. But I can share my public key. And then the contract address, I'm just going to change this to TBD for now until we deploy it. So up next, we have generated our generative art and we've added all the details we need into our project, as far as I'm aware. Next, let's redeploy to testnet just to go through those motions again. So what we are going to do is npx run, uh, maybe it's hard hat run, and then it'll be scripts, and let's run the mint script dot js and then our network your network might be different because I have already configured the hard hat so for me I'm gonna say Mumbai but just check inside of your networks for what network you are gonna be using to deploy to the Mumbai network for me it's called Mumbai so I'll copy Mumbai I'll paste it in here as Mumbai send it and now we're gonna be minting our new um, NFT. Minting, 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 minting NFTs. Boom. We've now minted the NFT. A uh, couple different ways we can get the uh, the address. I'm going to run npx hard hat run scripts and I want to get token script.js and my get token script, I'm gonna change this to, shoot, I don't even know how many we've created at this point. Let's just keep running it until, double dash network Mumbai. Make sure that I'm calling this from the right 
Okay, so we've got our owner, and then we've got a URI. This looks right, 1HY9 as the URI. Ends in 1HY9. So there is our... Uh, there is our URI. Now let's take the contract owner address and let's go over to Polygon Scan to see the transaction on Polygon Scan. And we can see one minute ago we have just run this transaction. So we can check out this transaction. We can see that there was an NFT being minted and it was from this address and we can check over here on our ERC721 tokens and one minute ago we minted a new NFT of token ID3 um, and we can check out this token to uh, see more data about it so this is our NFT our NFT was successfully minted Let's keep moving on. So we've just finished. We redeployed to the testnet, which is great. Let's update our hard hat config so that way we can do our first deploy to the production environment. So we'll go to our hardhat.config.js and add in this object. I'll rebuild it with you so that you can kind of code along with me. I'm going to call, if you have the original uh, network called Matic, change it to be called Mumbai. That way we can specify this as the, the test net. And then we'll create a new object called Matic. Colon, create a new object. And inside of there, we need two fields. We need a URL, which we can copy from the previous URL. And then the only thing we need to change is the word Mumbai. Change it to main net. And that's our URL. And then for, for the accounts, uh, you'll probably use the same private key unless you have a different account that actually has your Matic tokens. You need the private key of your uh, wallet that is actually holding your Matic tokens. Because if you try... Um, here, I'm going to give an example of Matic 2. That way we can... I can show you what happens if we try to use an account that does not have any live Matic tokens to deploy this. So we'll save this. You don't need to create this Matic 2. This is just for demo purposes. Yours should look very similar to Matic, except uh, you should have your private key instead of my main net private key. Save that. Now let's go ahead. Um, we've updated our hardhat config. Let's try um, deploying. Now really quick before I do deploy, I'm gonna make sure that my account does have the Matic tokens. Inside of my NFT wallet, I do have Matic tokens on the Matic mainnet. Make sure that you have the Matic mainnet set up if you're using MetaMask. Um, if you need help configuring MetaMask for mainnet, what I would just look up is Matic mainnet MetaMask and configure Matic on MetaMask. So you can see here, uh, this is how we can add our Matic mainnet onto MetaMask. You would just um, click on the network dropdown, click custom RPC, and then you would type in this info. So your name is going to be Matic Network. Your URL is going to be HTTPS colon slash slash RPC, and then the rest of the URL that you got right here. The chain ID is 137. And then these don't really matter, but I'm going to make it Matic. And then the block explorer URL is HTTPS colon slash slash polygonscan.com. Um, then you'd click save, at which point you would have your Matic mainnet. So once you select your Matic mainnet, you'll then see how many Matic tokens you have. If you don't have any Matic tokens, you need to add them. Um, it's If you don't know how to do it, it can be kind of complicated. So I will be making a lesson later for how you can actually take your tokens from Ethereum and move them over to Matic. If you do know how to do it, great. If you don't, ask me a question in the comments so that you can get help. Don't let this be a barrier though, so if uh, if you don't know how to do this and you're blocked um, and I haven't published the lesson yet, just wait, be patient for now, and just keep deploying your NFTs to the testnet. But I'll be making a video soon showing you how to 
take tokens from a, an exchange like a Coinbase and then sending them over to MetaMask, converting them across the bridge and then moving them into your wallet. Very quickly, I'm just gonna kind of briefly describe it to try to relieve any blockages. I use Coinbase as my uh, wallet where I buy tokens from Fiat into my tokens. So I bought Matic on Coinbase. Then I went into my Matic, my Matic wallet and I sent those tokens to this wallet address. So inside of Coinbase, you can just click account details. You can open up on your phone uh, the Coinbase app, go into your portfolio, tap on the Matic token, then hit send in the top right. And then you can scan that little QR code, which is just your public key. And then you can send the number of tokens you want to send. That is going to send. Um, it's going to send your tokens. Um, once you've sent your tokens, those tokens are Matic tokens on Ethereum, which is not what we need in order to deploy on the Polygon. So once you've sent those tokens, they might not pop up here. The reason they might not pop up here is um, let me let me actually go to the account that I sent it. So I sent some tokens did i send them over to my nft wallet i actually think i did send it over to my nft wallet so um if you when you send your matic it's not going to show up on the matic main net so what you'll need to do is click this add token button and then you'll need to paste the token address of the erc20 matic contract address Okay, I believe this is it right here. This should, oh, let me go back. So this is the Matic token on Etherscan and we have the contract right here and I can copy the address and then instead of MetaMask, let me see if, can I remove this from here? I wanna hide Matic. Yeah, I'll hide the token. So here's my assets. I don't see my Matic token, so I'll add a token. I'll add the contract address for Matic, and then I'll click next. Yep, that's it. So now I'll add the token, and then boom, I see my Matic. However, we're having trouble loading your balances. You can view them here. Where? So when I go over to ETH Explorer, I can see that, hey, I sent myself around 10 Matic from Coinbase. So this is where I can actually view how many Matic I sent from Ethereum. Now again, this 10 Matic that I sent from Coinbase is not what I can be using. This Matic needs to be converted from the Ethereum chain, which is an ERC20 token, onto the Polygon side chain, which is what we can actually use to deploy smart contracts for no gas fees. Um, so, okay, you have sent Matic from your Coinbase wallet into MetaMask. Now let's convert it into the Matic that we need. I will look up Polygon Bridge. Polygon has technology called a bridge, which allows us to send our Matic from Ethereum over to the Polygon network. So when we come over here, if you remember, I had about 10 Matic that I sent from Coinbase to my local wallet. I'm gonna change this instead of trying to send Ethereum, I'm gonna send Matic. And you can see that my balance is seven Matic. And now I can max this out and send all of my Matic across the bridge to Polygon. So what we're doing is we're sending it from Ethereum over to Polygon and it's still gonna be stored in the same wallet. Now when I click transfer, um, you just click transfer, you continue through, you approve everything, and once you continue, it'll take about seven to eight minutes, and then after you do that, your wallet will show a balance up here for your Matic. Uh, so I guess I kind of did it inside of this video. I hope I didn't lose anybody there. If you have additional questions, just shoot me a message, and I would love to help you out. But now that we have our wallet loaded up with our tokens, let's deploy to mainnet. I only have two Matic tokens in here, a little bit less. That's going to be plenty for us to do everything that we need to do to deploy our smart contract.
let's go over again what we do to deploy it to testnet just to make sure we've got it right because now that we're dealing with actual tokens this is an actual currency and i don't want to just waste my time by messing up transactions so i'm going to do it again on testnet by saying npx hard hat run scripts um and i think it is deploy script deploy script double dash network mumbai and the reason I'm using Mumbai is so that it gets deployed to the testnet. What did I do wrong? Oh, I said hard, hard. <laughs> Needs to be hard hat. So we're deploying our smart contract again to the test network. Insufficient funds. I don't have enough funds. Uh, so we'll, we'll quickly go over again how I would refill my wallet. Matic faucet. You just look up the Matic faucet. You go into your Matic faucet. You take your address that you want. For me, I need to go over to my test account. And then I need to copy my public key, paste it inside of the contract address, and then I click Submit. Input validation error. Okay, it didn't like what I did. I have found this to be kind of buggy, so I'll try it again. I'll enter in my public key. Submit it. Input validation error. Am I doing something wrong? Should end with 46 to C, which it does. Oh, I'm on the main net, which shouldn't make a difference, but we'll go over to the test net. I'll do a hard refresh over here. Put in our public key. And we're getting this input validation error. Um, the Matic faucet I have found to be pretty buggy. Matic faucet. Is this a new faucet? Do they have a new faucet now? Please select Matic. Wait, are they about to give me some free Matic? Let's go to the Matic main net. Let's pass their test. Let's see if I'm a robot. I am a human. Are they about to send me some actual Matic? Wow, it looks like they might actually be sending us some Matic. So instead of going through that bridge solution, I guess this might be a way that you can do it if this is actually what I think it's doing. We'll give it a little bit more time because if this is actually just going to send me some Matic, 
This is tweet worthy. We'll give it a little bit of time because I don't want to waste too much time here. This might change the whole game in terms of testing because for generative artists that don't really want to like go into Coinbase, buy Maddox, send it over to their wallet, convert it across the bridge, um, and pay all those gas fees, this Polygon faucet may potentially this may potentially fix a lot of those issues. It is sending. Did it do it? Do I have to check this again? Did I lose my place in line? Airplane, 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 verify. I'm a human. Send me some Matic, please. Would be pretty crazy if it did. Let's go over to the Ma uh, polygon scan and see transactions that are getting processed. Transactions, transactions. Here's my address. Let's see if we can see anything happening on my address over here on polygon scan no matching entries on polygon scan so haven't seen any transactions show up yet we do have it over on polygon testnet but i don't care about that right now are you actually sending me something I'm going to open up it in one more tab. I might not be patient enough. Truck, 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 truck. Truck, truck. I am human. Receive. Send me some Matic, please. I don't know what this undefined error is. Let's try it again. Send me some Matic, please. There we go. Wow, it just sent me some Matic. Okay, so if you need some Matic, go ahead and head over to the Polygon faucet, and it looks like they will send you this point zero zero five. Wow, that's really cool. That's really super cool. Okay, so now I have my Matic. We've now got Matic. Um, <laughs> but back to what I was trying to do. I wanted to go over to Mumbai Faucet. Let's see if I can send myself. My Mumbai. Copy the wallet. I should have enough. But it's not letting me right now. So I might just skip this step. We'll try it one more time deploying to the Mumbai network. You get what it's doing. If I had enough gas, we'd be good. But I don't. So we'll now move on to deploying to the main net. Let's assume we did deploy to the test net. Now I'm going to change this to Matic 2. I'm going to show you really quickly. Actually, we just saw what happens if we don't have enough gas. Um, in this case... I'm actually using the same network that I was just sent, but I don't have enough to be able to send the transaction. So now I'm going to do Matic, which is my account that does have enough Matic to be able to send this transaction. So I send it, and now we wait while our smart contract is being deployed to the
Polygon blockchain. This actually takes a little bit of time because there are quite a few. Oh, we're already done. Okay, so let's take this contract address. And before, when we were going to Matic scan, we're now going to go to just Polygon scan on the main net. So this is on the main net. I have just deployed a contract 16 seconds ago. Um, and then here's my overall address. And you can see that I did this a little while ago as well. Um, the transaction fee was double what it was before, but overall still less than a penny. Earlier it was about one tenth of a penny. This time it was two tenths of a penny. Nothing, like not even a penny. Um, Yeah, so we've just deployed our contract to the Matic mainnet. Awesome work. You have just deployed your first smart contract onto the Polygon mainnet. No more of this testing nonsense. We just did an actual thing on the Polygon mainnet. Um, now that we've deployed a contract onto the mainnet, let's actually, um, let's actually interact with it. So I'm going to take the I'm going to take the contract that I deployed earlier, but I'm just going to click on the contract. I'm going to copy the address, and now let's go back to our code into the mint script. We're going to paste this inside of our contract address. So we've now got our wallet address that I want to be the holder of my wallet. We've got the IPFS URI of our metadata inside of IPFS and now we have our contract address of the smart contract that we want to use to mint the NFT. Now we can go and mint our NFT. So now we are going to run npx hard hat run scripts. So now we're going to run mint script mainnet.js and if you don't remember our mainnet script is what we've just been modifying. So I'm going to say double dash network matic. And when I send this off, we're going to be minting our new NFT on the matic main net. Okay, it looks like I just minted my NFT. Let's go back to Polygon Scan. Let's refresh this smart contract. Uh, A44 wallet address contract address I should have let's see what's happening did it not do what I thought it was going to do Looks like it didn't. Gonna run it again. Mint script mainnet network matic. Oh, there it is. Okay. So here is the minting of our NFT. It should have been on this contract. So if I check this contract again, here it is. Okay. So here is our minting of our NFT. And if I go over here to my ERC20 tr token transactions, I can see nothing. There it is. Okay, so here is my NFT that I just minted. It's the first NFT, and now we can check out and modify our Git token script. I'm gonna do the same thing. I'm gonna copy the mint token script, paste it, and then I'm gonna rename it to mainnet. And the only thing we need to change in here is our contract address, which I'm gonna change to the new contract take this contract address 
paste it, save it. So now we're gonna npx hard hat run scripts. Um, get token script mainnet double dash network matic. And we should. I've got to change this back to token number one because we haven't created a token number three yet. Let's run it again. There we go. Okay, and we just got our IPFS address. So we just got our token. We've minted our NFT. Our NFT is now minted immutably on the blockchain. Great work. You have now deployed a smart contract onto the Polygon mainnet and you've also minted your first NFT on the Polygon main net. We're not playing around anymore. This isn't just testnet stuff. We're now playing on the Polygon main chain. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. Otherwise, in our next lesson, next up, um, I th what do we wanna be doing next? Uh, we'll talk about it in the next lesson and I'll think about it some more. Um, there's a lot of things that we can still explore here like deploying our website to be able to uh, see our NFTs and visualize them. We can be, instead of just deploying metadata, our smart contract, we can deploy a smart contract that actually has our IPFS script in it. There's a lot of ways that we can go from here. Um, I'll think on it more what the next lesson's gonna be. Thank you all for joining. I hope that it made sense. If you've got any questions, let me know. Otherwise, great work on moving from the testnet onto the mainnet. You're one step closer to becoming a generative artist. Thanks, everyone. Have a great day.